Welcome back to North Harbour Stadium where the score is nil all between New Zealand and New Caledonia and Mark it's a very frustrated All Whites team. Yeah, it is indeed and uh, down the sideline you can see the fact that the three guys are trying to play the triangle as Shane Smout's trying to play very high up the park and it's just not working with Chris James and Jared Smith aren't just getting wide enough to isolate Smoutsy one on one with his defender so it's getting very congested the ball's coming back inside and I think probably the timing uh, as mentioned was some of the players just taking an extra touch on the ball then players are out of the game and suddenly it breaks down they get plenty of players behind the ball and it's very very difficult to break down. Well some opportunities for the All Whites in the first half however Shane Smeltz uh, with the first of those this cross bouncing off the crossbar and uh, a very very good save from Nui. Yeah, it was just that height where Smeltz hit it at I mean the keepers come across and made a, a great save but lovely little run again here jinky run but uh, unfortunately Smeltz just got caught just offside and um, that would have been a great start for the All Whites. Having a look New Caledonia with Joker just Fantastic placement on the spread kick. Not quite fantastic enough though. We talked about how they're going to break them down and that could be the, the, the set play that could do it. But wonderful header here by Ben Sigmund. And uh, Ryan there just trying to guide that header into the corner but failing to hit the target. Ben Sigmund doing a fantastic job to get that back across to him. That's right and uh, enough numbers in the box but just not somebody in there a little bit hungry enough just to, to get that ball in the back of the net. But once again Tony Lockhead driving the ball in nicely and that frustration, the hands on the head. There's four or five New Caledonian players there to mark Jared Smith. So you can see so many players getting behind the ball and frustrating the All-Whites. Statistically speaking, New Zealand with uh, possession, we saw that possession stat inside the opposition half, very much dominating this game, but nothing to show for it. That's it, I think uh, you, know, you can play a lot of short game, you can play it around the back of the park, you can go forward to the halfway line, come back, and that's where your possession states are. They need to have more possession in front of goal get a lot more width and you know, get more delivery and get more late runs into the penalty area. We've seen a couple of balls just pop out to the six, eight yard box and there's nobody there to tuck it away. So I'm sure that uh, Ricky and Brian Turner will take a look at that at half time. The all Whites with 11 shots to New Caledonia's one and the man that took that shot was Joker who has uh, worked tirelessly for this New Caledonian side. Well, we talked about how possibly these guys, New Caledonian players, will break down the All Whites. It's been a set play, they've broken away very quickly. They're playing 4-5-1 but they're getting forward nicely. The pace, slippery grounds, an error by one of our defenders, then suddenly they've got a chance and we know that now that uh, there's no way that you can give away free kicks with somebody that's a dead ball specialist. And we've heard Fred and Ivan discuss uh, the New Caledonian flick just out to the wings very, very quickly. That's it, and just that, uh, it's that timing, it's that momentum, I guess it's playing together for quite a few games. And they always look a little bit rusty in patches, I think there's a little bit of frustration between you see some players just put their head down at times. You know, the ball isn't going their way, but they've just got to get more movement up front, more movement through the midfield, and there's certainly plenty of areas outside that 18-yard box. But some of the midfielders can just push into that hole and just have a go because the ground's greasy. We've seen twice or three times on several occasions that the goalkeepers are very, very hard to hold that ball tonight. We've seen Chris James create a lot of opportunities for the All Whites. Yeah, well, he's just in amongst everything. He's got a wonderful first touch, and he plays things very simply. He holds the ball, he gets his body in the right areas, he slows the game down when he needs to. And unfortunately there, at that occasion, not getting a free kick going his way, but lovely movement, lovely free-flowing player, and he's bringing a lot of players into the game. Unfortunately, yeah, it was a great shot, but you know, just off target, and that seems to be the way things are going so far in this first 45 minutes. Changes for the second half for Ricky Hoover? I think we'll probably see a change at half-time. I think uh, they've probably had enough of um, what they've seen as far as uh, they've had so much possession and nothing's come from it. Good opportunity, maybe Alan Pearce on that left-hand side. He does stay wide, he's dynamic, you know, he scores goals, he creates things. And I think that might be just that picking order they need was just somebody to stay wide on regular occasion and just give this somebody that outlay. At the moment everybody's coming inside the game, it's getting too congested and they need somebody just to get that ball, cut the ball back and once I say again, those late runs coming through, they're very hard to mark. Well here's confirmation of the teams in the Confederations Cup, yes New Zealand and some esteemed company they face, South Africa who are the hosts, Italy the World Cup champions, then you have Spain from UEFA, uh, Iraq from Asia, Brazil from Comnibol and Egypt from Africa and it's a star-studded lineup. those eight teams. Well it's an experience that uh, we a pleasure to be involved with in 1999 and some of the sides you play against, I mean the best players in the world in Group A, Australia, Bahrain, Japan, Qatar, Uzbekistan, I mean it doesn't get any tougher than that and then when you look at different groups, that pools that go through Iran, Korea, Saudi Arabia, UAE, I mean uh, they're very very strong and it's an area now that the All Whites are back into.
Yes, the All Whites will be facing one of those teams from Asia. The fifth best qualifier will face New Zealand, and it is a big step up, and as we heard, uh, it is an exciting step for the All Whites. Well, it's an exciting step, but they need a good build-up as, as well, going leading into that game. We can't just sort of play, you know, little so, uh, lo local games against each other. There needs to be a good format going forward for Soccer New Zealand, Football New Zealand, to get a good pathway to international games. So when you go into that group, it's not that huge task of the big step up towards um, higher opposition I guess but also you know, it, it's got to get the players playing, the professional players it's an opportunity now to Brian Turner, Ricky Herbert, the New Zealand contingent to look at players elsewhere to see what they could bring in to strengthen the squad. When you're facing a, a team like uh, Iran or, or Bahrain or some of the teams as we see Ivan Vissilic who has uh, done this on numerous occasions uh, receiving a, a lot, an achievement uh, award uh, from New Zealand Soccer 62 camps uh, and a wonderful player. Oh, he's been a, a stalwart. Uh, he started out his career you know, in, in the National League level at Waitakere, moved on to, to Central United, and then got a great opportunity with through the Kings to go abroad in Holland. He's done a, a, a great service to the game, and so did, so did uh, Steve Sumner. It's great to see the old All-Whites come into the party. It's great to see All-Whites in the crowd. I've just been walking through the crowd. There's several ex-All-Whites with their children coming up through the ranks. So the Confederations Cup for us, for New Zealand, for football in general, going forward, an opportunity to no, 180 minutes towards the next World Cup in 2010. It's a fantastic ambition. Well, thank you, Mark. At the moment, it's nil all. Will the All Whites be able to win this game at home against New Caledonia? We find out when we come back. It's the second half.
Welcome back to North Harbour Stadium, where it's all square, no score here after a first half that probably caused a bit of frustration in the all-white camp. And this is one of a raft of World Cup qualification matches being played throughout the globe uh, tonight, especially over in some matches of high interest over in Europe. Portugal up against Denmark. You've got the Netherlands up against Macedonia. The big one is probably England versus Croatia. And uh, Fabio Capello getting his first real test um, for his England side. France take on Serbia. Could that be the last match for Raymond Dominic for France? I think if they don't get up against Serbia, then he could be on the slippery slide. And also in the Asian qualification group, which has a lot of relevance going forward for New Zealand. Got Australia kick off their World Cup campaign against Uzbekistan. And in that same group, Qatar, who topped that group at the moment, are up against Bahrain. So, Ivan, the World Cup really getting into its stride now as we uh, look forward to 2010 in South Africa. Yeah, Fred, the football public is buzzing at the moment. A lot of qualifiers going on. Very interesting game will be the France game. They had an upset against Austria, losing 3-1. Interesting to see how they can respond to that loss and get back on track. So both teams out now as the referee just making sure all is in readiness. Doesn't look like there have been any changes in the all-white side. And I'm not sure, just looking through the New Caledonian team, and I don't think there are any changes, but we'll bring them if there are. So Ricky Herbert deciding to leave things as they are and let the players try and work this one out for themselves. So it'll be interesting to see also if they change their formation and get a bit more width going forward. So So just confirming a there is a change for New Caledonia. Roy Kiara has made way for Luther Wanyamala. And I think Wanyamala may take a wider position as he did in the first match in Numia. First impressions we see Duncan Allen pushing wide a bit more on the right. So it looks like that New Zealand will try and get the width back, which they had in New Caledonia. A key to the victory they had there. Here's Michel Mai. He's working back. Now switch of play from Michel Ney. There's New Caledonia trying to burst down the left, but the ball's gone out on the far side. I think one of the other things that the All-Whites may look to do also, Ivan, is to, uh, is to pick up the tempo of the match. It just seems that you know, some players taking probably one touch because they've had so much possession. Just some players taking that, that extra little touch and that uh, just killing the, killing the pace of the game a bit. Yeah, possibly getting a bit complacent. I mean, they've tied up the Confederation qualifying spots, so this game is only really to show the New Zealand public how good they are. They really have to put pressure again on the attacking third and try to win the ball over it and attack at pace. We can see the New Caledonians again sitting back, so it's going to be difficult to break them down again. This time Sigmund just lifts the ball over the for Tony Lockhead. James, quick one too with Elliot. But again, three and four touches from James. Now Lockhead, Lockhead delivers near post. Nay comes and gets it on the second bite. But again, you know it's pushing wide, trying to get Tony Lockhead as far forward as possible. Now the runs in and around the box. 
Just have to meet up with the cross. Lock it again. Smith on the turn. Alton should get this one. Alton, chance to shoot. Alton, hard and low. Smith over the bar. Good opportunity for the All Whites. Jared Smith again. Just can't direct his header on target. Great move by Duncan Alton there, forcing the ball over from New Caledonia. And again, Smith unlucky not to get his header on target. Come out of the tunnel here today, the All Whites probably been told to push on further in attacking third, and already there was a reward there and close to a result for Duncan Alton. It's a good save from Nate. He's made a couple of good saves this evening already. One from Shane Smeltz early in the first half. That time from Alton to get down quickly. A chance to turn for Alton. Just lays the ball for Lockhead. Lockhead checks inside. Goes into the box. Tony Lockhead squares the ball. But only a New Caledonia defender there. Yeah, good run from Tony Lockhead. Just taking the responsibility on himself to get in the box. Referee just, I think, telling the players it's a corner. So the first corner of the second half for the All-Whites. In taken short this time. Taken short to the back post. Shines! And there's the first goal. And again, Shane Smeltz on target. And he equals Keith Nelson's 30-year-old record. Six games in a row, this man has put the ball in the back of the net. That man again, Shane Smouts, finishes off a great piece by New Zealand. Smart play here by Simon Elliott, plays it short to the danger man, Chris James, who puts it far post with Smouts on hand to finish off. Yes, now he got a hand to it, but couldn't deflect it over the top. And again, the, the short corner being used to good effect by the All-Whites and Shane Smeltz makes it 10 goals for New Zealand and just 21 games he's played so almost a goal every two games for the Phoenix and All-White striker and his fine run of scoring form continues Really turning himself into one, if not the key player for New Zealand at the moment. Here's another one, Ryan Nelson. As you look forward to the to the difficult games coming up, it'll be players like Nelson Smeltz, who the All Whites will look to to be the difference and be the ones that potentially could take them all the way to South Africa. And will that spur them on? to more goals the crowd's hoping so clever little back heel and good work from Andre Senado to get across just take the ball and clear the danger for New Caledonia Waka Namune there, just getting upended. As New Caledonia, be interesting to see what that does to the New Caledonian play, whether or not they push forward to actually try and get a result, or they'll just be happy to be in damage control. Here's Brown looking for the switch.
Outen. Elliott. Nice play from the all -Wides. James, can he finish it? Goes for the delicate chip over the top, Chris James. But it was a beautiful move by the all -Wides. Probably their best move of the match. Nice interchange play there. And Tom Randy putting a great ball into the path of Chris James. Just choosing the wrong technique to finish her goal off. But we see the first goal, the 1-0 sitting down the New Zealand team. Probably taking the pressure off in front of the home crowd. Yes, the all whites there. Just showing how easy it is with good crisp passing to open up any defence. And that'll be a free kick. And probably a booking. Tim Brown gets another yellow card. Just come back from a suspension, Tim Brown. So this is probably one area that Ricky Herbert would be a little nervous because he doesn't want to lose too many players to this sort of to suspensions going forward. So important that the All Whites in games like this that don't mean a whole lot, they don't get themselves in yellow card trouble is when they get into the more difficult games ahead. Again, James. James has a really buzz of energy today. He's all around the park. Some great touches. Making himself available at every opportunity. Elliott goes for the 1-2. Gets the ball back and it'll be a free kick right on the edge of the box. Good work from Simon Elliott. He started the move. Eventually picked up the ball about 30 metres out. Went for the quick one too. And now has one inside a free kick in a very dangerous position. Good interchange here between Elliott and Smouts. And I think it's in range of Mulligan. We've seen him score like this again against Vanuatu in November last year. He'll be hoping to repeat it. Here's David Mulligan over the ball. Chris James there as well, but he moves away and leaves it for Mulligan. David Mulligan, he's the second highest goal scorer in this campaign for the All Whites. Takes a free kick, bends it over, a good save from Ney. Keeper did well to get across there, it was goal bound. Touch of class here from Mulligan, but the keeper read it well and has it covered there in the top corner. Having a solid game today, Mulligan, another experienced all-white. Getting the job done at right back. Yes, one of the pleasing aspects of this all-white team or performance today. The way the, the, way the defence is been able to deal with any of the danger now chance for Elliot to make it two again Nay comes up with a good save Jared Smith had made the insertion there and Elliot just couldn't capitalize always did everything right there Smith fast getting in the box Elliot, good shot on target, but again, New Caledonian keeper in the right place at the right time. Keeps New Zealand to 1-0. New Zealand threatening to open up. Threatening to open up this New Caledonian side now. Deep corner. Nelson rises. Elliot gets up for the header. Well, the ball goes out. It'll be a New Caledonian throw. Simon Elliott currently unattached, having uh, been at Fulham for a few seasons. So important for him to get to a club. 
and get some good football under his belt. Aston sends the ball high. Here's a substitute. One Yamala. But again, the defence equal to the task for the All Whites now. Lockhead. Chance to push on quickly. Is Smelts. Smelts looking to check inside his defender. Smelts wins the ball back. But then just runs the ball over the goal line.